Okay, of the discrete pro probabilities we want to be able to deal with in terms of distributions, one of the most commonly used when you have a fixed domain is the hypergeometric probability. Uh, to use this probability distribution, you have to know the entire domain or the universe of possible solutions. Um, if you know that, you can then calculate uh, the probability of any subset of that as you go through. So you're basically dealing with a population of size n and some kind of a sample that you're going to draw um, of small n. So the quintessential example of this might be um, calculating the probability of having a given hand in poker or some other card game, something of that nature, where all possible hands in a card game can actually be determined. You can, you can calculate the probability of all possible five card poker hands and then look at the probability of having any particular poker hand as you go through. So as you can see, the equation itself is just based on three different common combination equations. Uh, the denominator is simply the all the combinations that can be made of that sample size from the population. So it's all possible outcomes. Uh, that's what you need to know to use hypergeometric. If you, if you don't know that, you can't use hypergeometric. Uh, the top is really uh, multiple combinations. The one on the left, C, D, the two Ds. Uh, that's what you're looking for. So it's the probability of getting your success, the amount of successes you're looking for out of all the possible successes. So that's your, if you will, that's the good part of your poker hand. It's the pair or the full house or the four of a kind. Um, the next term, you'll notice the subtractions in the exponents because it's based on how much is there. But um, if you take uh, out of four cards, say, because you're looking for a poker hand, then n minus d would be 48. You'd be drawing the remainder out of the 48 cards that are left. So the hypergeometric probability um, has many, many applications, and it always applies when you've got a domain of interest that you understand the entire domain of. Next in our discrete probabilities is the binomial distribution. Uh, binomial distribution is used whenever you have a fixed outcome from your trials that you understand is to be one of two things. It could be heads or tails in your coin flip. It's anything where there's only two possible outcomes, defect or not defective, success or failure. Um, often the language of success is used. And you have to know the probability of doing that. Uh, so P is the probability of having the outcome that you're looking for. Q is by definition 1 minus P, so it's the probability of not having what you're looking for. So you'll see forms of this equation uh, that have P and Q. You'll see other forms of the equation that listed as P and 1 minus P. Uh, so P and Q are uh, always add up to 1 as you go through. So the probability of something happening is always 1. Uh, the combination seen in here uh, deals with the, the number of combinations that can make what you're looking for. So the easiest way to understand this kind of equation is to look at some examples. So here are some examples of the equation uh, that you might use. It's a discrete probability, so you're looking for the probability of a certain number occurring. So the top version of this, the way you would interpret that is take a look at the combinations in the front. So it's the probability of getting C of something, uh, so say C successes, out of a sample of 265, so n is 265 in the, in the equation. The probability of that success that you're looking for is 12.5%, that's the 0.125. Uh, the 0.875 is simply 1 minus that, that's our Q, so we, we don't usually mention that. Uh, so the way you read that equation is the probability of getting C successes out of a sample of 265 where the probability of success is 12.5% or 0.125. Always read it that way. C successes out of 265 trials with a probability of success of 12.5%. Uh, the middle one has the summation in front of it. So the way you interpret that one is uh, it's, it's all the C's from 0 to 35. Because remember, the first equation is a discrete probability. So it's only calculating the probability for one number. Uh, so if the, the equation is calculating the probability for a C and we vary C from 0 to 35, then the way you would interpret that second line is the probability of having 35 or fewer successes out of 265 trials where the probability of success is 12.5%. Okay, you, you could interpret it as fewer than 36 successes, uh, but I don't recommend saying it that way because the number 36 doesn't actually appear here. So typically when you're interpreting this equation, say it as the probability of having 35 or fewer successes out of a 265 trials where the probability of success is 1.125. The bottom equation subtracts that from 1. 
Um, so again, now we're looking at the not version of the middle equation. So the bottom equation will be interpreted as the probability of having more than 35 successes out of a trial of 265 with a probability of success of 12.5%. Uh, so most engineering applications will use either the middle or the bottom, depending on what you're trying to calculate. But you want to be able to interpret the equation correctly as you go through. The third distribution is the Poisson probability distribution, which again is a discrete probability. You're looking for C successes or C outcomes as you go through. Poisson is usually interpreted as the, um, the naturally random event horizon coming through. So you'll notice the natural logarithm appears in this. So it's the probability of C given an expected number. So you have to know an expected number um, in order to do this. So if I'm dealing with the um, number of patients that arrive in the emergency room, and I know that it's roughly 25 per hour. I'll use that as my expected probability, and I could calculate the probability of getting only 10 patients per hour, or only 30 or more, getting 30 patients per hour. So it's good for planning capacity um, as I do those kinds of applications. Again, you would interpret this the same way we did the other equation. You, you, there's multiple ways to interpret it. Uh, the top one here is the probability of seeing 12 occurrences of an event where we expect to see only nine. That's basically what the equation tells us. That's all you can say about it. The probability of seeing 12 events when we're expecting nine. And that's the time frame is irrelevant to interpreting the equation. This could be nine per hour, nine per day, nine per year. Uh, it doesn't really matter because you're, it's the same units on both sides. Uh, the second equation, the second with the summation, is the probability of seeing 12 or fewer events when we expect nine. When you expect 9, you know that's the number you're expecting to see, but you could get 10, you could get 11, you could get 4. So the probability of seeing 12 or fewer when I expect 9 is probably going to be pretty close to 1 as I go through. The last equation is talking in terms of the not on the second equation. So the probability of seeing more than 12 when I expect 9. Uh, so that, that's going to be a fairly low percentage as I go through, depending upon the, the level of the curve. Because I, when I expect 9, I might get 7, I might get 10, I might get 11, but I'm not expecting to get 20, I'm not expecting to get 30. That would be very, very rare as I go through. So these are the three ways you would interpret and write uh, values for the Poisson distribution. The last distribution we can mention just very briefly is actually a continuous distribution, the normal probability distribution, which will be studied at another time. Um, the only reason I mention it here is that z factor is a function of how far a value is from the mean, x bar being the mean and s being the standard deviation. So I'm converting a value of x into a z. The z is how many standard deviations from the mean is it. The reason we mention it here at the end of a discrete probability discussion is that as n grows very, very large, both the binomial and the Poisson distributions can largely be approximated by the normal distribution. And in many tools, it's much faster and easier to look up a normal probability than it is to calculate a collection of dis discrete probabilities. Uh, so we often convert a problem into a normal probability if it's very, very large.